and yeah, this is this is part two. Uh, we start off with Michael's montage. Round 4-1, the caverns. And this is when the game takes a very, um... Temple of Doom feeling? <laughs> You're in a cave filled with spiders rescuing children? This, this is Temple of Doom, guys. But again, the music is fantastic. And I actually, I take a lot of time on this one, where I'm, there's going to be a section where I'm, I'm just sitting there, because I have to look up a map where the kids are. Uh, because they actually don't tell you where the kids are. Like, you... That's, that's one thing about this game, is like, you have no idea where the kids are, you just have to start looking. But this level is even worse, because they don't give you any information as to things change. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting killed by a spider. Because I'm looking for children. So they don't tell you. Like, those spider emblems on the wall, if you use magic on them, they turn into caves. And this actually, uh, when I got the idea to originally do this as a what were they thinking, a friend of mine was playing this on my Saturn PC, and he's like, what is this? And he got to the, le the it was, the, like, the first stage, uh, where you're in the bar, and there's a little girl in the cupboard instead of one of the doors over uh, over one of the pool tables. And the game gives you no indication that you can open those or interact with those in any way, shape, or form. I, I don't know if it may have been in the manual, and I just don't have the manual. And that's, that's part of the problem. But, like, I would have never have guessed to check the spider emblems on the walls. Never would have occurred to me. I also hate that when you're walking through uh, the giant spider webs, you're slowed down. Like I, I wanted to make a Shelob reference from Lord of the Rings, but I, I just I couldn't. Instead, I'm gonna drop. And see, there's the there's the no magic symbols too. So like. And then here, I think it's this level, maybe the next one. There's one that, where there's a kid in a waterfall. It's like there's only in the cave levels. There's only one waterfall. So you wouldn't think, <laughs> or there's only one section that there could be a waterfall. And it's one of those they don't they don't tell you. They don't give you any indication that you know kids could be in these places. So you just gotta try it out. Now see, these cops, they dance. Why didn't the cops in the garage dance? But these cops also have laser rifles, so... At least I think they're cops. They look like cops, but apparently they're not, because they work for a kidnapping drug dealer. And I want to meet the family where this little girl comes from, because she has a lot of identical sisters. It's a, it's a little crazy. And like this level, oh my god, this level is crazy. Because... Each of the, uh... The, the caverns... Is just ridiculous. It's, it's more noticeable in this one, but if you look at the map for it, it's... This map is, is much more tall than it is wide, so you just go up and down more often. But then you're you're dealing with these caves that are basically take you to other maps on their own. It's uh, game design 101. Don't do this. Like at all, please, just don't. I always kind of wanted to get into game design, but I I lack a lot of the computer skills. I'm good with computer hardware. Like I, I built the Saturn PC, but dealing with the uh, the software to actually make a uh, hyperspin work was a pain. Uh, having to learn their the the coding language for the XML so that I can uh, I can put the lists together for it to work just you know just boggled my mind. I, I I messed that up so many times. It's not even funny. 
So, I, I know going into game design is probably not ever going to be a realistic realistic goal. Not that I really wanted to. I'm kind of content where I'm at now doing the, the video stuff for Rainfall. Because it's fun. Mostly because I, I, I worked retail a lot, so I always had really... I had some jobs I had really great co-workers, other jobs I had really crappy co-workers. Same goes with management. I had some... I had really good management, some I had really crap management. But the worst part of retail is the customers. Because customers are just such a pain in the ass. I really... I want to make it a requirement that everyone has to work at least a year of food service, a year of retail, you know, you've got to work so much so that you see what it's like on the other side. It's like, it, it really should be a requirement, because people who come in and demand, like, the whole customer's always right, bullshit. No, the customer's never right. The customer's usually wrong. The customer just doesn't want to feel like an idiot, but... If you're in a situation where the only way to not feel like an idiot is to yell at someone who has little to no power in said situation, then you're an idiot. And I can glitter rocks into multiple police officers and just destroy them that way. And I can move rocks with glitter. Giant rocks with glitter. But yeah, I... I kind of like the... the the video stuff for Rainfall because I don't have to interact with customers. I gotta interact with fans, but I like interacting with fans because, you know, at least fans seem to have the realization that if you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. Not every fan, of course. There's always gonna be trolls on the internet, but most of the fans for Rainfall is like, look, if you have a problem with it, you just don't watch it. Uh, again, I've gotten a couple of trolls. Uh, I remember one of my uh, Shining articles, the guy called me a whiny bitch because I was complaining that, you know, uh, Shining Ark wasn't going to come out in the U.S. And, like, oh, so not, you know, everyone understands Japanese and can import everything. Elitist prick. Like, what's wrong with wanting something in your own country? And then it, it kind of dawned on me, and my response to him was, you do realize you're on a website that was devoted to getting fan awareness to get games localized in their own country without having to import mod or any of that. I understand for PSP you don't have to mod because there's no region coding, but the, the principle still is there of what's wrong with wanting a, to support the business in your own country? Like, if I import the game, Sega of America doesn't get any money. Sega of Japan gets some money, but I didn't want to support Sega of Japan. I wanted to support Sega of America kind of the point. Like, even if I could understand Japanese, I would rather it be released in the U.S. Because, you know, that's my native country. It's just, it's just crazy. But, you know, for the most part, fans are, are awesome. And my fans are awesome. I actually have to say I really love my fan base. Uh, I love when I, I get random comments from all of you guys on videos. Uh, it's just... I kind of wanted to make the spiders dance here too, but I, there was just so many of them I said, you know, fuck it. But the, the fans, fans are better to deal with than customers, because customers have a sense of entitlement. Fans, fans don't. It's like, they kind of acknowledge, uh, if I don't like this, I don't have to watch it, I can just go away. For the most part, it's not going to be any skin off my nose. I mean, if you don't like it, that's that's your problem. I, I can't tell you how many people I'm subscribed to that re they release content that I don't really like. And here's where I, I pause forever, trying to find... Because this this level does not have a map. If you go into Game Facts and you look for maps of this, this game, this level does not exist. It ceases to be. It does not exist at all. And it took me that long to figure that out that it does not exist. So I go through this entire level just searching just everything. Or is it this level or is it the next one? One of them. There is there is not I think it might be 4-3. Uh that there is no map for. But one of the, the cave levels, there's no map for, so it just takes four bloody ever to do anything. I mean it has to be this level, because this is the last cave level. 
Is it? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm so not even paying attention to the video on the screen. I'm just rambling. I was rambling about viewers, and again, I really like my viewers. My viewers are awesome. I'm, I'm glad I finally hit the thousand mark. I, I probably would have hit this mark a long time ago if I had actually, you know, done something to market myself. I don't market my, myself. I don't sit here and advertise, hey, go watch my videos. Hey, like, subscribe, thumbs up if you, if you liked it. I don't do that because I... It's, it's almost patronizing to you guys of, hey, if you like this stuff, like it. It it seems seems silly to me, doesn't it? Like if you like it, you're obviously gonna like it. And I don't need you to, to click a little button to prove that it's it's good. It's like if you like it, it gets views, or it gets likes, or I get subscribers, or I get comments. I get any of those things, and any of those are well worth the effort. It's like and I don't like I don't make a living off this. I don't put I don't monetize my videos. I'm not a YouTube partner. I don't do any of that jazz. So I, I don't feel the need to sit here and say like, subscribe, etc., etc. Because it's just it it feels almost patronizing to, to the viewers. Like I if it's a a let's player or even just another YouTuber that I know that makes money off of it, um, I'll occasionally like, comment, you know, because I know those metrics do get the money. Uh, because the more hits they get, you know, I, I'm not, I'm actually not even familiar enough with YouTube's policies of, is it based on views? Is it just based off ad clicks? Because, I mean, I never click on the ads, and I, I do apologize to any YouTuber that I may affect by doing that, but I just, I don't click the, the ads. If, if it's something that I'm curious about, you know, if it's a service I'm actually curious about learning about, I'll I'll take a few minutes out of my day to, to learn about it. Uh, I, I really don't think your YouTube ad is is going to sway me one way or another. I mean, I, I've never had that happen. I've never watched a YouTube ad going, I have to look that up. It, it's like the ads that they play on Adult Swim. Like, I swear if I see that, that Cougar Land, Cougar dating site thing I'm I'm gonna kill someone like every time I see that commercial I just I have the urge to kill someone like I, I know some you know women who are older than me that are you know drop dead gorgeous but I can also guarantee you that they're not going to an online dating site to look for 20 year old guys I mean I guess that means they're definitely not cougars, but I, I don't know. They just that's the that's the type of advertising I see on YouTube. I, I guess maybe my ads are just tailored to YouTube thinking I like older women. So I don't know. But YouTube ads just don't do it for me, and so therefore I don't I don't put them on my videos. I don't do any of that. I mean, I've actually been approached for partnership from a couple of smaller networks. Um, well, one mid-sized network and one smaller network. The mid-sized network, however, um, I asked various Let's Playing communities of, Hey, have you guys ever heard of this? And they're like, yeah, don't. Um, I don't even remember the name, so I'm not even gonna, uh, bring that into it. But this is the one with the, the waterfall that makes you wonder. Because it doesn't look like you should be able to, to do that with the waterfall. But I, I check each one of these, and it takes me forever. And, uh, yeah. But I, I just, I don't do the... Yeah, I, I, I sit here for bloody ever doing this. I probably should have cut this out. Yeah, we're gonna cut this out, and we're gonna, we're gonna skip ahead. And that was forever of me just sitting there looking to find where the kid was, and it's in a waterfall! Who would have thought? Who would have thought it? Yeah, I... I don't know. Yeah, kid's right there. In a, a hidden cavern in a waterfall. Yeah, because that's a thing. But yeah, um... I don't know. 
I, I was talking about subscribers, and I can sit here and just keep, you know, talking about subscribers and how much I love you guys and thank you and all that. But I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. So I mean, if you guys like it, that's great. I'm glad you do. Let me know, because you know I love getting all the responses and everything. Uh, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I mean, I can try to do, you know, some slightly different stuff, but. It's gotta be stuff I enjoy, otherwise there's no point in doing it, you know? And I, I get stuck here trying to figure out where Bubbles is trying to tell me to go. Because he can only point in 90 degree angles. And I, I screwed that up because I'm just terrible at the floating platform jumps of this game. Bubbles can only point left, right, or up, or down. And that's... Like, cardinal directions are it for Bubbles. And why does, like, why does Joe Pesci feel the need to taunt me every time I'm getting ready to get into a boss fight? Like, why is that a thing? And police and zombies, and they all do different dances. And they couldn't even get all of them on one side. It's different ones on each side. That one, the, the spiders actually, quote, danced. So. But we're quickly approaching the, uh, the end of the game. Uh, and we get another montage. Round five, the enemy hideout. This is actually, I think, the last stage of the game. There's three of the. There's obviously three of the stages here, and then you get a weird boss fight at the end of this, and then you get the boss fight with the final boss, which is just. It's crazy. I left it out of the "What Were They Thinking" video because I didn't want to spoil it because of just how different and weird it is. And sadly, all I can think of when I hear this song is, I'm fat. Like I, I know it's bad when, uh, and I should have checked that door. I think that door has a kid in it. But, I mean, I grew up with Weird Al songs, so, I mean, if you, I, I, if I hear the Weird Al, or if I hear a song that Weird Al has done, I think of the Weird Al version. Like, I, I, I can no longer hear the legitimate version. It's, it's Weird Al or nothing. Like, as much as I like Gangster's Paradise, um, I love Amish Paradise more. There's just something about it that's just... It's heartwarming to me. Uh, it could also be the fact that me and my friends could sing it. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm a terrible singer, but that's that's one that we would actually sing, and we'd actually sound half-decent doing, because... And we knew the lyrics to it, so... We were complete and total dorks. But I'm sitting here doing video game footage for the internet, so it's not like I've, you know, quote, grown up or anything. I'm still... I'm still rather dorky. But at least now I own it. Uh, I... It's like a badge that I wear in public. Sometimes I do, because I, I wear my, uh, my signature, um, Aussie slouch hat. Uh, because that has now become my signature. I've had that hat forever. Uh, my dad gave it to me. I'm, I'm actually looking for another one. Trying to find one that doesn't have a mesh top is actually kind of a pain. I was looking for a black one, but apparently they don't exist in black. They're, they're only khaki. Uh, but I, w I wanted to buy a new hat. I went to California last year for uh, uh, my wife's uncle. He was getting married, and so we're going out there. And I found this really cool hat shop, and I wanted to buy a... Uh, a top hat. They've got it's a, a called a Dead Man Topper, based off of uh, a Johnny Depp movie. It's a, a it's a short top hat, uh, kind of like a coachman's hat. And uh, I wanted to buy it, except I had no way of getting it home because we we were flying and I only had one carry on and it wouldn't fit in my bag. And I they could ship it, but I mean. I could also order it online. So that was... They had an online store. It's like, okay, well, if I'm going to end up paying for shipping anyway, why don't I just order it online? It's just easier. But then I... 
I get home and I start doing the uh, the the live videos. And now I'm like, well, I can't change hats because now that's my signature hat. Everyone recognizes that hat. Uh, I could switch, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, Total Biscuit's thing is a, a top hat. He, he, at least his icon is him wearing a top hat. I don't know if he always wears the top hat. I mean, I could make that my thing. I could wear a top hat. Uh, but it would also have to have my my Zelda pin on it. But I, I think my my slouch hat uh, it it kind of fits fits a little bit better. But I, I do need a new one because that one's a little old. So I may be getting a new slouch hat for that uh, and make that my my signature hat. I mean, it's obviously my signature hat. All my live videos, you guys see me at. Uh, a friend of mine had a, a silly hats only party based off of uh, uh, what is it? Uh, the rejected uh movies, the rejected like PSA movies, like my anus is bleeding, um, my spoon is too big, I'm the queen of France. Uh, they had a, a silly hats party, and I wore that one, and she's looking at me, it's like that's not a silly hat, that's your hat. Michael. Uh, a friend of mine was wearing my Mario hat. Uh, you've, you you saw that in several other videos. But yeah, my, my slouch hat is my my moniker now. I'm also... Uh, I've got a friend working on a new banner for the new YouTube layout because I figure I should, I should probably start branding myself, you know? Actually start doing something to, to stand out a little bit more. I may start marketing my videos here soon and just posting... But I, I don't even know where. Like, I could go to the, uh, the Something Awful forum for the, the Let's Play threads, because, you know, that's where they started. But I really don't feel like my quality is up to their standards, because, I mean, they're very particular about the, the quality of their content. And I'm, I'm fairly particular, but um, they, they, would, they would rip me a new one, because, I mean, I, I spend a lot of time on the... Uh, the Let's play subreddit, and there's there's always huge. It's a very polarizing group. Uh, I actually have a family member who does uh, let's plays as well, does video walkthroughs, and he was looking at my channel, and he's like, "Dude, you gotta get rid of the black bars on the sides." And that was for four to uh, games that are uh, aspect ratio four to three versus sixteen by nine. And I'm like, all the games I do are 4 to 3. If you do the 16 by 9 to stretch it out so that you don't have the black bars on the sides, because YouTube automatically does things in 16 by 9 now. It's like, it stretches out the game and it looks terrible. He's like, no, trust me, you gotta do it. And I didn't, and I actually asked some of my more vocal viewers about what they thought about it. And they, they don't care either way. I mean, and I, I went to the subreddit. And they're polarized on it. Some gamers are like, no, it's YouTube's default. You have to do it. The black bar is your distraction. Um, others are, no, keep the aspect ratio of 4 to 3. Just superimpose graphics on the side of it so you don't have the black bars because the black bars are just distracting. Because, you know, cha artwork for the videos aren't distracting either. Uh, like, they use cover art. Um, one of the, the more interesting ones is they... Uh, I forget who did it. I'll, I'll have to look it up and I'll put it in the, the video description. He uses an overlay of the video itself. So it's the overlay of the video in the background is stretched, but it's background so it's grayed out. And the foreground is 4 to 3 and in color. Which I thought was kind of nifty. Um, I think I could do that on my editing program. I don't, I don't use the fancy stuff like uh, Sony Vegas or uh, Adobe Premiere or any of that. I use a uh, video pad that came as a, a bundle with uh, debut. I, I bought it as the bundle because uh, I I needed a separate record. Or I used to use Pinnacle, which recorded and edited as well, but Pinnacle was just terrible. And so when I switched from Pinnacle to uh, debut, I needed an editing program, and I didn't feel like torrenting one of the expensive ones because I'm. I, that's what everyone does. Everyone torrents it. No, no Let's Player spends the money on Sony Vegas, ever. Like, 
if you do, more power to you, because, you know, that's awesome that you actually do that, but... Uh, it wasn't gonna be what I was gonna do, so actually, I actually paid for it, which is weird. I paid for Videopad. Uh, but I don't, I don't spend a lot of time dealing with Videopad as to, you know, what its features are. I've only just started, uh... Just started working on it. I could probably, probably do it. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure something out. It'll be, it'll be interesting. But uh, it's. I, I don't. I, I still don't stick to their standards, and or I don't. I don't think I quite match their standards because all of my games are now in 16 by 9, and I, I finally gave in to my my family member who's he's like, get rid of the bars. So I did it as an experiment to see how it would look, and it didn't really stretch out the older games too bad. So I, I went with it, uh, and with this one, I can actually record a little bit better because, like, I had problems with the, the Castlevania games being too dark. Now I run into other problems. Like one of the things that we're doing with Chrono Cross is we're recording it on my system, and. Uh, Depending on what file format I'm recording in, the game will jitter. It'll just flick, flicker up and down, just a little bit, at random. Um, and it's doing that on Culex's as well. Uh, but his does it for several games, not just Chrono Cross. Mine, it just seems to be uh, Chrono Cross. Uh, but he also doesn't use Debut, he uses Virtual Dub. So, I mean... And trying to troubleshoot this is non-existent because everyone uses such different software and hardware, trying to narrow it down of what the problem is, is like damn near impossible. So... But I, I'll start posting more on the the, su the Let's Play subreddit, and I'll, I'll find some forums or something that I notice a lot of you guys frequent. I've been told that I should join uh, the MechWarrior Online forum, since obviously my username's MarauderEX. Um, and I was, you know, busy a lot on the, sh the Shining Force Central forums during the whole Sega debacle, but, I mean, Shining Force Central, it's kind of a one-trick pony, they're kind of interested in Shining Force. They may like some of the other RPGs that I'm doing, since I did all of the Saturn RPGs, but, uh, still, it's, that's a very narrow, narrow market. And this endurance fight is even bigger than any of the previous endurance fights. You're fighting all of these green, uh, green-suited cops because they're they're just a reskin of the blue-suited cops. Uh, but you're fighting them as the giant robot, and you can shoot lasers at them, or you can use your magic to shoot the missiles out of your head. Uh, but I don't really think they can do damage to you. Like I don't think you can take damage in the robot form. I, I don't know. At least I don't. I don't give them the, the chance to. But you do so much damage to them, and the base collapses. Congratulations! You've defeated all of Mr. Big's henchmen. You've escaped from the trap set by Mr. Big set for you. You rescued all the children Mr. Big kidnapped. They just keep saying Mr. Big. Now it's time for the channel final challenge: you versus Mr. Big. Mr. Big. Mr. Big. 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 So it's now us versus Joe Pesci in space in a rocket ship because our car turned into a rocket ship. And so now it becomes a shooter. And that does not look like Joe Pesci. I would have thought that was an Asian guy. <laughs> that is a horrible likeness. And so what you have to do is the lower right corner, you see a little radar screen with a blue bar or a little blue dot floating around. The blue dot is Mr. Big. You have to fly around and center him in the square so that you can shoot him. Uh, otherwise, the bad guys will just keep coming, and it takes me a minute to figure it out that I'm not hitting anything that's not Mr. Big, and trying to shoot him is kind of a pain. And he'll ram you. Like, that's how he stops you. He'll ram you. And I was getting really, really nervous that I, I'm, I'm going to die because... I, He's doing just as much damage to me as I'm doing to him, and I'm in the red now, and he rams me, and I thought that was it, but that was it. I, I won. 
I, I killed Joe Pesci. I feel terrible. I should have just asked him to say a funny word and pay him a nickel for it. Instead, I had to go and kill him. So yeah, now we get the credits where Michael flies off in his rocket ship and he dances with a kid who's not in this version of the game. That kid is in the, uh, the arcade version. He's not in the Genesis version other than this. There's three kids in the arcade version. Uh, so yeah, that has been my 1,000 subscriber special. Uh, thank you all for getting me to this point. Uh, I hope you all continue to enjoy my my videos and my content that I put out, both here and on Rainfall. Uh, again, continue with the likes, the, uh, the, mostly the comments. I'm not going to say like, subscribe, comment, just comments. So, thanks everyone.